All right, so let's continue with this reasoning on Tanakh. Tanakh, we just kind of give, gave a basic summary of, well, what they say Tanakh is from what it is not. And we had mentioned that Tanakh, not Tanakh, uh, but Tanakh, Ta'inak, Ta'inak. If you go to Metafiyasu um, Wodenewe, which is um, the book of Joshua, son of Newe, or son of Nun, chapter 12. Now, this is contained seven times in Scripture, which is very, very interesting. Now, the spelling of it, let's go to the whiteboard for a moment behind this. The spelling of it, of, now we have this spelling. We want to show you this link right here. We have Tanakh. Ta. Tanakh. Right? And now, Tanakh is said to be an acronym, and this acronym stands for the following. So when you take each primary letter, the T is for Torah. Right? The T is for Torah. The N is for Nebim, or others will say Nevim. So you will also have it under VI, the Ashkenazis replace the D with a V. Um, and then under KH or K, you will have the Ketu Beam, and the Ashkenazis say Ketu Beam. Once again, replacing the the B, the original Hebraic B, for for the V sound. So this is what we are told that it means. We're told that uh, Tanakh is the so-called Jewish scripture, but this is a modern acronym. This, as it is, is not found in the same context anywhere in scripture. This was an acronym that that um, European, Ger Germanic, and Polish Jews, in a sense, made up in order to summarize for themselves what the Torah or the Old Testament books, these are the Old Testament books of the Bible. So we have the T for Torah, right? The T for Torah, the N for Nabim or Navim, and the KH for Ketubim, for Ketubim or some will say Ketuvim, or some will say Nevim instead of Nebim. But Nebim is the more correct. Now, what does Tanakh really, really mean? Now, I want you to compare this with what we find in the Scripture. When we look into the Scripture, seven times in the Scripture, we find Ta'anak or Ta'itnak. You understand? We find this, basically. So, this is what we find T A A right and A C H. We have Tanak, Tanak, Ta or Tainak, Tainak, right? Tainak. Now, what we find to be very interesting is when we start to look up. Well, what is this? What is this Tainak? This is what we was pointing to in the last video, and we was going to break down the Talmud and the books in the Talmud, and we'll do that hopefully in the next part of this uh, series. But um, we said, let's go into this a, lo a little bit more in detail. Now, if we look at Bamarinya, Bamarinya in the Amharic, we find this right here. We find that is, is ta, is i, na, Ta inak, or in parentheses we have ta, we have i, we have na, and we have k. So ta inak, ta inak, ta inak. But like we said, what is ta inak? So let's go to one of the, one of the references to ta inak, and one of the references that we have to ta inak, we have in um, chapter 12:21, in chapter 12:21 of 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 Joshua, or Welde Yasu Welde Newe, or Yeshua, Old Testament Yeshua, 
we have verse 21 where it says, Bamarinia says, Yeah, yeah, Azif Nigus, yeah, Nak Nigus, yeah, Megiddo Nigus. The Targum or the translations, the king of Tanak won, the king of Megiddo won. So there was a king of a place called Ta'anak. Ta'anak. Now when we look in the Metaphysical Bible Dictionary, once you're able to get our our notes, our notes properly assembled, and to get the spelling that is found, it's actually the first the first reference under T in the Metaphysical Bible Dictionary, the first reference under T. And this first reference of the T says in the A V Joshua twenty one twenty five Ta Anak Hebrew it means deep, hard to pass, sandy. It means sandy soil, battlement, shut up, a gate. A gate. This is the basic meaning, Hebraic meaning of of Ta Inak, of Ta Inak. Ta'inak, or Tanakh. Now, biblically speaking, it was the city of the Canaanites in Joshua 12 and 21. It was allotted to the Israelitish tribe of Manasseh. It was allotted to the Israelitish tribe of Manasseh in Judges 1 and 27. Now, here's where it gets really interesting. Let's, let's return to the... Let's return to the um, to the dry erase board for a moment. Here's where it becomes very interesting, because we're told that okay, the Tanakh, and we and we demonstrated and and showed a version of the Tanakh that we give thanks to um, one of our members for actually um, giving us as a as a gift. And this is this is the Tanakh right here from the Jewish Publication Society. And now, if you could read the Hebraic letters. You can basically see it's one and the same as the Ethiopic, except it's in the square Babylonian, the square Babylonian um, characters from the time of Isra, right? From the time of Isra. So this contains this book here contains the Torah or the five books of Moses. It contains the Nebim or the pro- the prophetical writings of the prophets and the Ketubim or the other writings, the other writings in the other books, such as the book of Joshua will be considered a Ketubim, and the book of Judges is a Ketubim, and the book of uh, Cherut or Ruth is a Ketubim as well. But the books of like Daniel and the books of Isaiah and Ezekiel and the other prophets are considered the Nabim and the five books, the five books of Moses is Torah. Now, they call these books, in summary, the Tanakh. But remember what Christ taught us? What did Christ taught us? He, Christ gave us a parable. He gave us a parable of a wise man and of a foolish man. And the wise built his house, right? The wise the wise man built his house on what kind of foundation? And the foolish built his house on what kind of foundation? Now, let's go to scriptures for this parable because many of you all probably already know the parable. And Christ says, he who does what? He who hears my words. He gave a likeness to the one who hears his words. He said the one who hears his words is as a wise man. But the one who did not hear his word, he likened to a foolish man. So there are two types of soil. I, w- I want you to make a note of I want you to make a note of this because it's going to be very important as we reveal what the Tanakh really represents in its Christological perspective from its from its Christological perspective and the parable of Christ is the significant is a significant reference that we'll like to um, um, bring into you know bring into the the discussion because he said that there were two types of 
builders, the one who heard his, his words, they would build it on the rock. And those who did not hear his words were building it on sinking sand. Now, the Kibbutz and the Guest also explain some very interesting matters about this. Now, some could call these matters in today's way of thinking, they could call it anti-Semitic. You understand? Except could Christ be an anti-Semite, seeing that he himself is a descendant of Shem? Well, of course not. Of course he is not anti-Semitic. So we have to understand that that is the only perspective to approach it. Otherwise, ones who would try to stir you away from this truth will throw out all sort of false allegations saying this is anti-Semitic if we would name some Jews as foolish Jews, especially in an atmosphere like is today. And this is what, as we start to look at this particular teaching, this is what makes this particular teaching even of um, more significance, of much more significance to us in the present time. Now, Tanakh it has been defined as what? It has been defined as a, a, a sandy ground, shifting and shaking sand. Because within the Tanakh, the Ethiopic books, as well as the New Testament, is not included. Therefore, it is not firm ground. Yes, it's Old Testament ground. Yes, the Old Testament came before the New Testament. And how can you get into the new if you don't know what the old is about? And yes, in that sense, it's a foundation. But in and of itself, without the testimony of our Master and Medicine, our Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMoshiach, it is not complete. It is not full. It is not perfected. Now, some Jews are still looking for the Moshiach. They are still looking and expecting the Messiah. And most uh, nowadays religious Jews, this is what they are looking for. They're looking for the return of the Messiah. They're looking for the return of Christ. Now, some Jews have begun to recognize and embrace Yeshua, Yeshua as the Christ or as the Messiah. But many still have not embraced Jesus Christ or Yeshua HaMoshiach as the Messiah, and they continue to build on this rock, on this, on this sandy, this sandy and, and, and shifting, sh sandy and, and shifting, um, and shifting ground. Now, let us touch on Christ's uh, parable. Christ's parable contained in Matthew chapter 7, verse 24. Let's turn our Bibles to Matthew chapter 7, verse 24. So the best way and really one of the only ways to fully fully understand this is, in a sense, by, by, by contrast. And by contrast to the, the, our rabbi. Who is our rabbi? Our rabbi is the Moshiach. Our Rebbe is Yeshua, HaMoshiach, is Getachinam and Hanatachin Yesus Christos, our Black Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, is our Rabbi. Now make a note of Rabbi as well, because Christ did give us instruction on how we are not to be called Rabbis, for one is our teacher, and that teacher is Christ. This does not mean that we do not have other teachers after Christ, but Christ, he is the main reference for us in these Hebraic, Judaic, and, and of course, Christian um, matters, matters of true spirituality, because he is the Bain Ha Elohim. But let's go to uh, Matthew chapter 7. Let's turn our Bibles to Matthew chapter 7. Now, in Matthew chapter 7, and here's where we're going to get a contrast with the Tanakh, because what does Christ, first of all, teach us? In Matthew chapter 7, Matthew chapter 7, verse 24, this is a section that's called Two Foundations. And this is why what we are seeking to present, present up here is, 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 a, is, is a great reference as well as is of great interest. 
because what is presented up here is one of these two foundations, is one of these particularly two foundations. Now, here it says in Matthew chapter 7, verse 24, it says, Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine, heareth of the testimony of the Moshiach, the testimony of our black Lord and Savior, Yehoshua HaMoshiach, Getachina Med Hanatachin Yesus Christos, and do with them. So it's not enough just to hear them, though we must hear them. We must make available the hearing of the word. But it's more important now not just to hear it, but to do it, to do it. So it's, he says, Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him to a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. It was founded upon firm, firm foundations. And everyone that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened to a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. And it came to pass, when Yeshua, Yehoshua, had ended these sayings, the people were astonished, astonished at his Talmud. They were astonished at Adonai Yehoshua HaMoshiach's Talmud, or at his doctrine, his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority, one having sultan or sultane, sultan, and not as the scribes, and not as the scribes and the Pharisees and so forth and so on. Now, why is this particular area of Scripture important? Well, first of all, it discusses two foundations. We have a, a similar parable given in chapter 6 of Luke. So let's just turn our Bibles to chapter 6 of Luke, verses 47 to 49. Now, Luke 47 to 49, the parable of the house is called the parable of the house built on the rock. Whosoever cometh to me and heareth my sayings and doeth them, I will shew you to whom he is like. So, our master in medicine, Yehoshua HaMoshi, he said, I will show you that one who one comes to me. Come to me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, that come to me, that come to Yehoshua, that heareth my sayings, that heareth Yehoshua's saying, and doeth them. So there's three parts. One is to come to him. One is to hear. Is to hear. And thirdly is to do. So before we can do anything, we must firstly come to him, we must hear of him, and then we must do do what he tells us to do. He will show you, he's showing us, showing us to whom he is like. Verse 48, he is like a man which built a house, which built a bait, which built a house, and dig deep, he digged very deep and laid the foundation on a rock. Now, here's the key thing. He dig deep because Enoch also means, it's said to mean deep. When we, when we look at the reference here for Ta Enoch from the Metaphysical Bible Dictionary, it says that it means deep, hard to pass, but it says sandy soil. It is sandy soil. It's a battlement. It is shut up. It's a gate. Well, well, we haven't dealt with the metaphysical just yet, so stay tuned for the metaphysical understanding of it. So he says that one who hears, one who comes to him, hears his sayings and doeth them. He is like a man which built a house, built a bait, and dig deep and laid the foundation on a rock. And when the flood came, when the flood came, now it's important to note that this flood is connected with the days of Noah, Noah, days of Noah, the days of Noah's. You understand? And the flood can be, um, as a figure, a, a type, the flood is the flood of ungodly waters. It, it's what we are witnessing, in a sense, in these end times, both the physical flood and the flood of evil doing. 
you understand, of, of, of evil doing, the flood of evil. And when the flood arose, the stream beat vehemently upon that house. Now, house is often likened to a church, too. So when we have bait, bait is a house, but a, a, a house is also a, a, a church when we are taking the metaphoric um, comparison there, and could not shake it, for it was founded upon a rock. It was founded upon the firm rock, just like the rock-hewn churches of Ethiopia, of Ethiopia. But he that heareth and doeth not, no, this doesn't say he that comes and don't hears, but it says that even one who hears and doesn't do it is like a man that without a foundation, without a foundation built in house upon the earth, just upon the ground, against which the stream did beat vehemently and immediately it fell, and the ruin of that house was great. Remember what Christ teaches? He says that um, the stone which the builders, right, there's a stone which the builders refused. And that, and that stone which the builders refused, he says, has become the, 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 the head of the corner, the stone which the builders refused. It is interesting because the stone that the builders refused is that Ethiopic or that Ethiopian foundation, that half of the story, that missing link in biblical and African history. Now, let us continue now on Tanakh. Because now here is where we're going to make the connection. So where there's two foundations. Let's, let's get up here for a moment. There's two foundations. Now notice this, this is one foundation. Tanakh represents one foundation. But the secret, the overstanding to Tanakh, this, this modern Jewish, you say, trinity of books is found in the name of this Canaanite city, Ta'inach, the Ta'inach. This is what we do. We say we should not call... It the Tanakh. People say, but it makes sense, Torah, Nabim, and Ketubim. What about the other books? 